Hey guys, this is Doug again with Fellowship of the Martyrs.com, LibertyDisasterRelief.com, coming to you from the Ministry House in Liberty, Missouri. Want to invite anybody to come, come be a part of the revival that's happening in Liberty. Come help bring the fire of God down on a city in America and see what happens. If you uh, want to come for a weekend, you're welcome. If you want to come to till Jesus comes back, you're welcome. We're uh, just gonna try to be one body and love everybody that comes and see what happens. So far, it's working real good, and uh, we need all the help we can get. If you're in Liberty, um, come visit, see what God's doing here, and uh, see if maybe maybe we're onto something. In this video, I want to talk about baptisms. It's something people have asked me about, and uh, um, I have a sort of a different take on it than a lot of people, and uh, it's it's going to rile some people up, and I don't particularly care. Because that's kind of my job to put you on your knees asking the Lord to send you back to the scripture to find out if I'm wrong and um, so here we go Luke 3 16 among other places John the Baptist is speaking and uh, they're asking him if he's the Messiah and he says I baptize in water but there's one coming after me that baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire okay he doesn't say that baptizes with Holy Spirit fire he says one that baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire okay that's three baptisms water spirit and fire um, the Baptists where I grew up understand the water baptism just fine you need to be immersed and uh, you come out it's a it's a symbolic death and resurrection you go under the water and you die and you rise up in Christ and uh, you become part of the body of Christ. Um, the Charismatics and the Pentecostals and all of those folks uh, understand the Holy Spirit baptism that happened in Acts chapter 2. That Peter said, this is for you and your descendants and those afar off. It wasn't just for the apostles, it continues to this day and it's an empowering event that Peter got that he didn't have before. And Peter was saved before. You can't say that he received the Holy Spirit for the first time at Pentecost because they were out healing and delivering demons before that. In John 20, 22, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So they had some blue stuff in their cup. They had some Holy Spirit in their cup previous to Pentecost. But what happened at Pentecost was that the tongues of fire came down and the Holy Spirit came down and they got the second baptism of the Spirit and the third baptism of fire all at the same time. And that has confused a lot of people because after that they think, People got hands laid on them and they spoke in tongues and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they, they did. But I think what wasn't being understood was that the baptism of fire also happened and a lot of people after that have missed it altogether. Just like God is three parts, Son, Spirit, and Father, so are we three parts, body, soul, and spirit. And all three parts of us need to be dunked, immersed, submerged, washed clean in all three parts of Him. And Jesus, the Father, is also body, soul, and spirit. We are made in his image. The, the, the God, the Trinity, is three parts. And there's another video about the tripartite axioms on here where you can understand that better. That God is body, Jesus, who came in the flesh, spirit, the Holy Spirit, and soul, which is God the Father himself, which is the beating heart, the, 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 the whole point of the Trinity. And it's all summed up in him and all things return to him and they are three and yet they are one just like I am body soul and spirit and all three parts of me need to be immersed in God and my physical body gets immersed in the water and rises up changed and and my my flesh rises up dead to self hopefully if I mean it rises up dead to self and and changed my spirit my, my spirit needs to die and then rise up in the fullness of his spirit in me. In fact, our spiritual nature is severed from God because of the fall in the garden. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, when we receive the Holy Spirit for the first time at salvation, but what happened at the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that they got just dunked. They got lots and lots all of a sudden. That wasn't the first time that they got any of the Holy Spirit in them, but there was a big burst all at once. And there's different ways to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And it may not happen in some big shebang, whiz-bang thing where you fall down and speak in tongues. Some people do it the old-fashioned way and just get, get filled with Jesus slowly, like, like filling a swimming pool with a, with a garden hose. 
Some people fill their swimming pool by calling one of those helicopters that puts out forest fires and he just dumps on the whole neighborhood and the pool's full. Either way, the pool swimming pool is full, but I trust more the people that got it full little by little with the garden hose than the people that got it with one big whiz bang that they can't repeat over and over. Because he says to be being filled all the time. So, the Baptists understand about the water baptism. The Charismatics understand about the water baptism and the spirit baptism, but hardly anybody is preaching the fire. The old Wesleyans, the old holiness people, the old Nazarenes, others talk about sanctification. Um, the, old, the old Pentecostals used to talk about a second blessing, that there was salvation, there was the first blessing, which was receiving the Holy Spirit, but then there was a second blessing that was sanctification, where something just happened to you, and it was really, really hard to sin from then on. That something just burned a whole bunch of self out of you. And, and what you need to understand is that your body gets baptized by the water. Your spirit get, gets baptized by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But your soulish nature, yourself, has to be burned off by the fire. That's the hard one. That's the crucifying daily. So many people are preaching one or two of those. But the most, the most valuable one, the most radically transforming one, is the fire. And, and the Bible is clear. Now, you, you can say, that's not what my church preaches, that's heresy. But the Bible is clear. John the Baptist, the greatest prophet that ever was, Jesus said, he said real clearly that one comes after him that will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He didn't say with Holy Spirit fire. Those are two different things. And on Pentecost, they got both of them. But, but there are, it's clear that people after that, like the church in Corinth, had received the Holy Spirit baptism, but they hadn't got the fire. Because they weren't sharing with each as they had a need. They weren't dead to self. They weren't, they weren't working together like the first batch of them did in Jerusalem. Why? Because they didn't get the consuming fire that burns the soulish nature. They were one of the most soulish city churches in the Bible. Somewhere along the way, of course, Satan wants us to not preach the fire. He'll, he'll, he'll humor our body. He'll humor our spirit. We'll be all the time, you know, Holy Spirit come, Holy Spirit come. No! I want to get behind the curtain. I want to go into the Holy of Holies where the Shekinah glory of God is. The temple, anybody can get Jesus. He's out on the temple porch speaking to the people out, out around the temple, around the court, talking to them, bringing them to him, getting the water baptism. You get the Holy Spirit, you get inside the temple. But you're not going through the curtain getting into the Holy of Holies without the fire. And, and that is where the glory of Yahweh, Almighty God is. And you can pray and say, Holy Spirit, come. And that's wonderful. But I want the fear of the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Lord. Not fear of Jesus. Not fear of the Holy Spirit. That's not in the Bible. We're to have fear of Yahweh. Fear of Jehovah, Almighty, just God. And for that, you have to have the fire. Because you cannot get into the presence of a holy God without having your stuff burned off. That is going to result in, when the high priest went into the temple went into the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippur. They tied a rope around his leg because if he went in there and wasn't all the way clean, he would drop dead and they would have to drag his dead body out and get a new high priest. That's fear of the Lord. You better be sure you're cleaned off. And that requires the fire of God. And so part of what we're preaching here is the third baptism, is the fire of God that consumes and burns off all of the soulish nature in you that is getting in God's way. Because sin isn't the great enemy. Self is the great enemy. Sin is easy. Demonic oppressions are easy. You tell them, you rebuke them in the name of Jesus and, and tell them to get off. You, you ask for forgiveness for your sins and wash them under the blood. But self has to be crucified daily. And if you want to speed it up, ask for the fire. Ask for the consuming, refining fire of the Father that will come and teach you fear of the Lord and will burn everything out of you that gets in His way. That's all I have time for right now. More on this in upcoming videos and more on fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.